tonight, and we're going to begin here with that headline late today that Pfizer offered to sell more doses of the Pfizer vaccine to the U.S. earlier this year, but that the Trump administration said no. And now the New York Times reporting that Pfizer might not be able to get the U.S. more doses until next June because of other countries that did buy in. The Trump administration responding tonight and this evening, a spokesperson for the Department of Health and Human Services downplaying the news, saying they have five other vaccine candidates. But this could bring real questions and tonight the staggering numbers right here. 14.8 million cases, 1 million new cases in just the first five days of December. We're now at 2,100 deaths a day on average. Nearly 90 Americans are lost every hour. More than 283,000 American lives lost now in this pandemic. Hospitalizations at a record high in ICUs across the country. This one in Montana at 200% capacity. Their own staff now falling victim as well. California, for one, imposing a strict new lockdown for most of the state. New York's governor warning he might have to roll back the reopening here if numbers continue to climb at this rate. Massachusetts reopening a field hospital in Worcester. And tonight, Dr. Anthony Fauci warning Christmas will be more of a challenge than Thanksgiving and that we face a dark January. We're going to begin here with that reporting that Pfizer offered the U.S. more vaccine, but that the Trump administration declined. Now the wait for more could last until June. And here's our chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl, leading us off. Tens of millions of Americans may have to wait longer, months longer, to receive a COVID vaccine because over the summer, the Trump administration passed on buying more doses from Pfizer. For months, the president has touted his efforts to deliver on a vaccine. Vaccines are on their way at a level that nobody ever thought possible. But tonight, the New York Times reports and ABC News has confirmed that Pfizer offered to sell the U.S. government additional doses of its COVID-19 vaccine late this summer, but the Trump administration turned them down. They decided to buy only 100 million doses from Pfizer, enough to vaccinate 50 million Americans, because a full vaccine requires two shots. By contrast, the European Union bought 200 million doses from Pfizer with an option to buy more. Pfizer may now not be able to provide the additional doses for the United States until June. U.S. officials involved with Operation Warp Speed tell ABC News they didn't want to buy more vaccine from Pfizer until they were sure that it would be authorized by the FDA. They also say that combined with vaccines from Moderna and other companies, they will have enough vaccine to make sure that every American who wants to be vaccinated can be by the middle of next summer. Meanwhile, President Trump is refusing to acknowledge the reality that the pandemic is entering its most dangerous and deadly phase yet. We're rounding the turn. We're rounding the corner on the pandemic. The day after he spoke those words, his own personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, was in the hospital after testing positive for coronavirus. So uh, 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 Rudy's doing well. I just spoke to him. He's doing very well. No temperature. But tonight, Giuliani is still in the hospital. This after he spent the last few weeks traveling the country, making unfounded allegations about election fraud, shaking hands and doling out high fives. In Michigan, Giuliani asked a witness to take off her mask. She declined. I don't want you to do this if you feel uncomfortable. But would you be comfortable taking your mask off so that people could hear you more clearly? Can, can you hear me now? Not clear. Can everyone hear it clearly? We can hear you. We can, we can hear you. Okay. 79 years ago today, the country was reeling from the loss of 2,403 American lives at Pearl Harbor. Those deaths stunned the nation. There was understandable outrage and fury over the attack. President Roosevelt declared war on Japan the next day, called it a date which will live in infamy. 2,403 American deaths at Pearl Harbor. Right now, the United States is averaging more than 2,200 COVID deaths a day. That's nearly one Pearl Harbor every 24 hours. By April of next year, the University of Washington's Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation projects the pandemic will have killed upwards of 100,000 more people in this country than all the American troops killed in three and a half years of the Second World War, more than half a million dead. President Trump is the one who likened this to a war. He called himself, in fact, a wartime president. But that was a long time ago. Those were in the days when he wanted to be seen as a commander in chief leading the effort when he took over the coronavirus press briefings and then stopped listening to the doctors who actually knew what they were doing. Now, the president doesn't seem concerned about being a wartime commander. If anything, he seems more like a deserter. He's absent. The American people have given him leave, voting him out of the ballot box, but he still has some weeks left. 
he has chosen to go AWOL. He's declined to join the fight against COVID. He's not rallying anyone to wear masks. He's not talking about our dead, our hurt, our fear. Yeah, it has been that way for months, I know, but it is particularly galling given, given so many of us are now sick and dying. December 8th, 1941, President Roosevelt said, and I'm quoting here, there is no blinking at the fact that our people, our territory, and our interests are in grave danger. He was spelling it out for us. August 14th, 2020, here's what this president told Bob Woodward. You and nothing I, more could have been done. Nothing more could have been done. Well, I, I acted early. We'll, we'll, acted early. Th- so we'll this see. will... It was not just a declaration of surrender, but a justification for having already surrendered months before. Worse, unlike FDR, this president did not make it in front of Congress. His words came in a private conversation. He didn't have the courage or the decency to tell the American people the truth that he was forfeiting. But as far as he was concerned, he'd already done all he could, already checked out. Since then, another 115,000 of our fellow Americans, many of whom supported and voted for the president as if that should even matter, but to him, you would think it might, have died of coronavirus. As of tonight, the count now stands at more than 283,000 with nearly 1,300 deaths reported just today. On Friday, the president signed an order proclaiming today National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. It reads in part, we solemnly honor and uphold the memory of the patriots who lost their lives that day. He had nothing to say, however, about the 2,879 Americans reported dead in this country of COVID the night before he signed that proclamation. Nor did he speak of the dead at his largely maskless rally in Georgia the very next day. How many of them might have survived if more had been done, if more of us wore masks, socially di- social distance, if the president really was a wartime commander. Instead, he claims nothing more could have been done. And look at the shot there. See how most of the people behind him are not wearing masks? You may recall that is different than what you'd see when he was on the campaign trail, when he still hoped to get your vote before he lost the election. The campaign used to put people with masks behind him to at least pretend that they cared. In fact, they would give them masks often if they didn't have masks of their own. They were, they were pretending to do the right thing. They're not even pretending to care anymore. It is now every man and woman, woman for, for themselves. And look, that's the way it's always been with this president and the, the people he's chosen to surround himself with. But it's more clearer than ever. As for the dead, The only dead the president spoke of were the ones in his fantasies about the election he lost. We're not going to control the pandemic. We are going to control the fact that we get uh, vaccines, therapeutics, and other mitigation. Why are we going to get control the pandemic? Because it is a contagious virus, just like the flu. Yeah, but why not make efforts to contain it? Well, we are making efforts to contain it. By running all over the country, not wearing a mask? 